Hey guys, it's Flyboy, and today we're going to be talking about the DC villain known as Weasel, who is soon to appear in James Gunn's Suicide Squad movie, which comes out August 6th, which I'm extremely excited for. We already covered Javelin, so let's cover the rest of the villains. So, Weasel first appeared in the Fury of Firestorm number, uh, number 35, uh, Frost Winter, which is what it's called, created by Gary Conway and Raphael Canyon. And in this story, uh, it mainly focused on Firestorm going after Killer Frost and the villain known as Plastique, who could blow stuff up with... Her powers allow her to blow up stuff. And while Firestorm was chasing after Killer Frost at this power plant, you had Weasel, who in his first appearance, he was in this file room at the Vandermeer University. And sadly, a unfortunate night watchman walked in to find this creature, you know, sitting on one of the tables. And the appearance of Weasel is kind of disturbing and creepy, as you see in the Suicide Squad trailer, which when I first saw him, I was like, what the hell is that? Which, I mean, you know. In issue 36, I slowly turn Niagara Falls. We again focus on Firestorm taking on Killer Frost. And again, Weasel has a very small appearance. And it kind of explains the fate of the Night Watchman. And what we learn is, this is like the third murder at this university. And when the n news reporter comes over and is like, so what happened to the guy? They said, oh, like, it looks like an animal attacked him. It's, you, you know, you don't have to be mean and all this. But they're being honest. Like, it looks like an animal attacked them. And from afar on a building, the creature known as the Weasel watches. Weasel's story would then continue in The Fury of Firestorm number 38, written by Gary Conway and Raphael Kenyon, in the story Night of the Weasel. In this story, the story begins with the Weasel lurking on the rooftops of somewhere in the University of Andover watching Martin Stein, who's on just a random walk. And he's talk, he monologues to himself in his head about how the nighttime is his friend and fear is his friend. And he's just really creepy. I mean, he's a freak creep, you know? It just, whatever. Anyway, while Martin Stein is walking around, this professor known as Emily Rice comes by like, you know, you really shouldn't be walking around out here at night. It's real dangerous. He's like, you're kidding, right? She said, no, there's been like four murders at this place. And Stein is kind of like, he's kind of curious on what's causing this. He ends up back at the girl's apartment, who tells him, you know, you can stay the night if you want, because, you know, kind of a little bit of romance going on between the two of them. And of course, from afar, the weasel's watching his prey, Martin Stein. And uh, before Stein's getting ready to take a shower, he's, his glasses are all fogged up, and he can't really see what's going on. But in the shower, the weasel's waiting for him, and he literally comes crashing through the shower and attacks Martin Stein. And just glass shatters all over the place, goes into Stein, but it doesn't hurt Weasel because his suit, it doesn't affect him. They then get into a tussle, which leads to the window where Martin Stein falls out the window and he's kind of hanging there and Weasel pretty much lets him drop because he's got some vendetta against Martin Stein. We don't know yet why, but before Martin can hit the ground, he fuses with Ronnie and becomes Firestorm, the nuclear man. And they quickly fly off to figure out what the heck is going on. So they get back to the, so they're flying around, you know, they're talking about like, so who is this guy? And Martin's like, I think this is the person who's killed like four people on the Vandenberg camp campus. They then return to the apartment where Ronnie is then attacked by uh, the weasel. And then so is Martin. And they're both captured and they're taken to this steel mill where the weasel talks about, I had to do this to keep myself safe. And how Martin would understand why he's doing this. The story would then continue in Fury of Firestorm number 39, Public or Parish, or The Academic Life is Killing Me. And the story starts where we left off with Ronnie and Martin Stein at this steel mill. Luckily, they fuse together because they're both awake now. And they fly off and chase after Weasel, who's trying to get away. And they don't really catch him, but they do get away. And they're both still trying to think on why anybody would do this. And Martin's like, I kind of have this theory. I think he may be a professor who has a tenure, which is where you get this position that you can keep, but can be lost in a certain circumstance. But while Martin talks to the girl he was talking to earlier, Ronnie goes to investigate the Vandermeer University to find clues on who this guy is. While doing so, the weasel sneaks up behind him. And while Ronnie's looking at the papers, the weasel comes out of nowhere and attacks him. Luckily, he and Martin Stein fuse once again to become Firestorm, and the first real confrontation between Firestorm and Weasel finally happens. 
In their first confronting, Firestorm shoots Weasel off them and tries to turn this file cabinet into a bulldozer and throw Weasel against it. However, Weasel ends up get, trying to get away by jumping into the maintenance tunnels which are above the floor. Firestorm falls after him but it's dark in there so he can't really see so he creates this light with his hands and it's like a beacon he puts it in front of him. Now, Weasel, he's acrobatic. I don't know if it's because of the suit or if this guy's naturally acrobatic but he swings around one of the pillars in the maintenance ducts knocking the fire into Firestorm's face, blinding him, allowing him the chance to jump onto him and riding him. And as they ride for this wall, it breaks and they go towards this bridge. And the bridge are these two trucks. They're flying in between them. Firestorm tries to go in between them. Weasel jumps off in fear of dying. And he lands in this car and it knocks the air out of him, which allows Firestorm the chance to get him. And once Firestorm gets him, he unmasks them. And he asks like, who are you? And the guy's like, my name's John Monroe. And Martin stops like, I don't even know who this guy is. And that's because he did go to school with Martin Stein, but no one remembers him because the only time they did talk to him is when they called him a weasel or mean to him. So it's kind of created this murderous rage in him. But he used his tenure as an excuse to kill these three other teachers who went to Stanford with him. And Martin Stein would have been another victim of his, but Firestorm stopped him and he gets arrested. The Weasel would then reappear in Suicide Squad Special Number 1, featuring the Doom Troll, written by John Ostringer, Robert Greenberger, and principled by Eric Larson. And this story, it begins in a plane over Nicaragua, which contained three people. However, the plane is very quickly shot down, and there's only one survivor. And when the survivor hits the ground, it's revealed that the survivor is actually Hawk. From, you know, Titans, Hawk and Dove, also from Justice League Unlimited, if you don't remember the cool episode where they were Hawk and Dove working with Wonder Woman. Anyway, the government hears about this, and then you have the president tell Amanda Waller, like, look, you gotta go get him out of there, kill him, I don't care, but send your squad there and, you know, take care of it. But what we don't know is the government's already sent a group in there to Doom Patrol, and I love the Doom Patrol. They're crazy, they're wacky, but they're entertaining as hell. And the Suicide Squad, which is made up of Weasel, Thinker, Rick Flag, Mr. 104, who is also a Doom Patrol villain, they're already in Nicaragua. And the Thinker, he pulls up the castle where they find out the Hawk is staying because he has the ability to read minds and all this other stuff. And so they get there, and Weasel just goes berserk. He goes after one of the guys and just literally starts wanting flesh. Yeah, this version of Weasel is a lot more ferocious. Then they want to run into the Doom Patrol. And what's the first thing Weasel does? He attacks a robot man. Oh, and then he attacks Finker and kills him. Yeah. So then this whole battle breaks out. All because Mr. 104 attacked Doom Patrol and Weasel attacked Robot Man. But, uh, but the fighting continues. Mr. 104 fighting Robot Man. Weasel fighting uh, Tempest. Rick Flag picks up Finker's helmet and puts it on. So he can try to get control of the situation. But he can't really get control of the situation. They don't get control of the situation until the Red Rocket show up, which is sent by Russia, who are also trying to get the Hawk. And it's just a huge fight again breaks out. And they shoot Robot Man. Robot Man's fine, though, because, you know, he's a robot man. Negative Woman and Mr. 104 go at these different robots. And Weasel also tries to attack Robot Man again while they get away or after they've gotten away. Then the Red red Rockets show up, and Weasel rips the flesh out of the chest of one of them. And then all of a sudden, this Russian guy comes into the prison and breaks out Hawk, and boom, mission's done. So the Finker, the Finker's helmet still on Rick Flag, and all of a sudden he just shoots Weasel and kills him. This because the Finker left a fought in there before he died of like, look, kill Weasel, and Weasel's dead. That's... That was the end of Weasel in this comic book. That was his death. And they eventually, you know, they get Hawk. They go back to America. And they, he, Rick Flagg is the last surviving member of his squad. And that's how the story ended. Weasel would finally return in the event known as Blackest Night. He would, as a villain that was raised from the dead. See, Blackest Night was this event where heroes and villains were raised from the dead because of the Black Lanterns, which was recently discovered in Sector 666. Yeah, I don't know why you'd go there. I don't know what you expect to find. But he's somewhere in this picture. I can't exactly find him, but I know he's in there. But uh, he would then reappear in the New 52. 
In the New 52, Weevil wouldn't appear until the event known as Forever Evil, where you have the crime syndicate coming to the DC Universe from Earth 3 and Lex Luthor having to make a resistance. A lot of crazy things happen during this event, like Bane taking over Gotham, uh, Nightwing's identity being revealed to the world. But Weasel, his first appearance, it was in the first issue. He was the meeting with all these other villains who were brought there where the crime syndicate was like, look, you either join us or you're going to die. And he's on the front rows, you see, he's circled. But he then appeared in Agent of Argus number five. And this story, Steve Trevor and Killer Frost, they were just walking in this, I think this park, and Weasel jumps out of nowhere and tries to attack them. However, Steve Trevor is very quick with his gun and shoots Weasel across the, you know, field, and then Killer Frost freezes him. And that was the last known canon appearance of Weasel that we know of. However, a version of Weasel did appear in the Batman issue 666. And it was this vision of the possible dystopian future where Damian Wayne becomes Batman after Dick Grayson is killed by Joker. And honestly, I love the story. I think it's awesome. It's cool. It has a lot of crazy stuff in it. And this Batman is a lot more brutal. But yeah, I know we're not here for a Batman video. But I just got, I had to show a little bit of love since Weasel does appear in it. But he appears as this minion of this Satan version of Batman. Yeah, I told you, it has everything. But uh, Batman beats the living crap out of him, as well as the other guys, very quickly. Because apparently this version of Batman gave him his soul to the devil. Yeah. I'm telling you, this story has everything. It has a Jokerized version of Barbara Gordon with a machine gun in a wheelchair shooting Batman. But anyway, Weasel on, on this, in this... I guess future universe is killed after President Simon Hurt drops a nuke on Gotham after the Joker toxin has gone completely crazy. Yeah, I told you, uh, this story is pretty wild. Not crazy as Animal Man, like the writer, but it gets wild. I think the Weasel will survive Suicide Squad. Honestly, no. <laughs> His character is described as being behavior like a weasel. Literally, like, he doesn't know what the hell is going on. That's why he's looking a great. He's dumb, too. Supposedly, he's just a... He's an anamorphic... I don't know if it's a person in a suit, or I'm pretty sure it's like an anamorphic experiment gone wrong. But, as Rick Flagg says in the trailer, he's not, he's not aware of he's a weasel. He only killed 27 people. You know. <laughs> but, based off what you see saw recently in the video of Rick Flagg and Weasel on that mission and when he killed Finker and since Finker is in this movie now Finker doesn't show up till later I'm guessing but my theory is Weasel is going to go off task or whatever in the middle of one of the fights and attack one of the teammates I don't know who it will be most likely Blackguard since he's already scared of Weasel and Blackguard has a history of dying stupidly so, I feel like Weasel will attack Blackguard in the middle of one of the fights, and Rick Flagg will be forced to put him down. Because, also, Weasel, he's easily agitated. And what do animals do when they're scared or agitated? They attack in defense. Just like you see him in the helicopter when Blackguard gets all scared, Weasel starts fidgeting too and making noises. What's that animal personality in him? So, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to say if Blackguard got agitated during a fight or a gun went off that he shot, Weasel might attack him and kill him. Because I don't think he'll kill Savant. I don't think he'll, or you know, he could try to attack Rick Flagg. But my bet is on Blackguard because Blackguard already kind of scared of him. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I don't care. But uh, I guess I'll see you on the next video. Um, it might be Bloodsport, Polka Dot Man, or maybe Peacemaker since he should be in the movie and I also really like his character. But I'll probably have to cut it down from an in-depth, you know, look into his character and probably have to make it a little more smaller. I don't want another Mr. Fear 40-minute video. But I also have a Marvel villain in mind, which would probably be a very short and quick video. But we'll y'all just, just have to wait and see.